Hey everyone, I'm Zenith Priest, and welcome to my introduction for Sunbright Whirlwind, where I will give you insight into the nature of this spirit and show you how to clear the invaders by turn 5. Sunbright Whirlwind is primarily a control spirit, but also provides good utility and has some mid to late game offense in the form of its innate power. We start with a presence in the highest sands and a sacred site in the lowest mountains. This can leave us a bit spread out to begin with, but we do have good range for placing presence, so this shouldn't be that much of a problem. The playstyle shows a penchant for keeping lands clear before they're able to build, and in keeping with its fickle nature, suggests that any progression path is viable. We'll go more into which specific strategy we'll be taking later on. By putting a stiff wind at their backs, we are able to push an explorer or Jahan whenever we place presence during the growth phase. Generally, this will stop a build early on, but it can also help with counterattacks. Our first growth option is a standard reclaim while also gaining energy and a new power. Next, we can place a presence close by while also gaining quite a bit of energy. It's good to jumpstart some strategies or to help fuel a big turn or expensive major power. Last, we can gain a new power and place a presence at a range of four which is the greatest range given to any spirit released so far, allowing us to spread across the island with ease. Our progression tracks are both generous in terms of energy and card plays, even granting us some elements at the same time near the end. Our strategy is going to focus on the lower track exclusively, aiming to hit the higher tier of our innate power with its higher offensive output. That innate power summons violent windstorms, allowing us to push certain invaders at the lower levels and causing damage at the higher ones. It may take some practice and creativity before using this feels natural, since this can be executed a number of different ways depending on the specific game being played. For our unique powers, Gift of the Sunlit Air grants any spirit extra range to all their powers and an energy if you target an ally. It's rare that we will need this ourselves, especially in a smaller island, but it costs zero and gives us our elements, so helping another spirit is a nice bonus. Gift of Windsped Steps allows a target spirit to make one control power fast and grants an energy if the target isn't yourself. We're more likely to use this gift on ourselves because we have a number of push powers though there will be opportunities where it makes more sense to give it to an ally. Tempest of Leaves and Branches deals up to 5 damage spread out over 5 different invaders. Groups of Explorers come to mind as the simplest way to make use of this on its own, but combined with another offensive power, this can turn into a decent finisher. Note that this is the only power that requires a Sacred Site, so while we tend to flit about with our presence depending on where the invaders explore, Consider your position before committing to this power. Scatter to the Winds is a solid control power, pushing up to five non-city invaders or Dahan to different lands. Even though its strength is mitigated somewhat by its lack of focus, there's still a lot of value provided, even if we can't always maximize its use. And with that, let's get started on a demo game. As a low complexity spirit, I'll be using the progression deck for powers and disabling expansions to simplify our decisions during play. All right, let's begin. Turn one, the invaders start by exploring the mountains. To reach the highest level of violet windstorms by turn five, we'll need to pull presence only from the bottom track and can afford to reclaim only once. We'll also need to consider our power choices carefully and not necessarily use all of our available plays. There's nothing we can do about the coast, but we can stop land 7. We'll need to use the middle growth option once during the game, so use it first if possible. Push the explorer into a central land, either land 4 or 5 in this case. This helps us consolidate explorers for Tempest next turn. Even though we have two card plays, Scatter is the only power we'll want to move that wetland town into the coast. If the town land is the first to explore, Add Gift of Windsped steps to prevent a city from building so far inland. In this scenario, push a town adjacent to land 2 if possible, because if that land does explore, we're more likely to be able to handle it if a city crops up. Once the invaders build, they proceed to explore into the jungles. Scatter the wetland town into the coast as discussed, and then we continue. 
turn two. Now that we have enough energy to work with, we'll need to start gaining some new powers. First up is Gift of Living Energy, granting up to three energy if you target another spirit. Without the progression deck, zero cost powers with air will get you the furthest, but there is a lot of room for flexibility. Because the strategy focuses on gaining so many powers, missing typically won't be that much of a problem. Now that we have our power, let's place a presence in the upper jungle, pushing the explorer into the ravaging mountain. Our plays will be Tempest to clear the other jungle and Gift of Sunlit Air primarily for the extra elements to let us push a new explorer later on. There are rare instances where we will need the extra range to use Tempest, but mostly we should be able to offer the gift to another spirit. We do lose a presence when the mountain ravages, but there's nowhere for the invaders to build, so they venture out into the wetlands. Putting a stiff wind at their backs, push the explorer in land 5 up into the jungle for the Dahan to take care of next turn. Turn 3. We'll need 3 cards and sufficient elements to deal with the wetlands before they build a city, so let's take the last growth option again, revealing Elemental Boon, which grants a spirit 3 different elements, giving bonus elements to us if we choose an ally. Without the progression deck, we'll want another minor power to be able to play three cards, hopefully with the right elements. We're aiming for the second tier of Violent Windstorms, and with the right picks, we'll see the third tier from time to time. A presence goes into the higher mountains, pushing a Dahan into the lower jungle to set up a counterattack. Playing our hand, we proceed. Gift of Windsped Steps will make Violent Windstorms a fast power. Elemental Boon will give us the elements we need for tier two of Violent Windstorms, and Gift of Living Energy gives us the obvious. Finally, summon violent windstorms in the coastal wetlands, pushing the explorer into the jungle and the town into the mountain. During the invader phase, the Dahan destroy the jungle explorers, and with the wetlands clear, they explore into the coastlines. Turn 4. With no cards in hand, we reclaim gaining Reaching Grasp, giving any target extended range to their powers. Without the progression deck, here's where I would reach for a major power. Chances are, we won't play it this turn, but knowing now allows us to make better decisions about our card plays this turn, and whether we'll need the second or third growth options next turn. This turn will be our weakest turn, because we want to save our heavy hitters for later. That leaves us with the zero cost powers and elemental boon. Since the zero cost powers give us enough elements for the second tier of our innate, let's play those and not pay for the boon. It's not wrong to play it instead of our reach cards, and that would give you some extra damage. Just pay attention to your energy and which major power you picked. The Ravage clears the wetlands, leaving just two coasts to build before the invaders continue their expeditions, this time heading back into the mountains. Having two cities in a blighted land about to ravage seems pretty scary, so hopefully you picked a good major power. Even before we gain that power, we'll be doing a fair amount of damage next turn, so we really only need a little bit of help. The correct use of Violet Windstorms will depend on which power you have, so here I just simulated not knowing and pushed a single mountain explorer into the wetlands. That way, if I miss, only one land will be blighting. Turn 5. We're not quite able to take care of everything, but with good options in hand and a fair amount of energy, let's pick up another power. Power Storm grants a spirit three energy and the ability to repeat up to three different powers by paying their costs. If the game were to continue, then you'll have to consider which card to forget, but here I'll just forget whichever discarded power I click on first. Our presence will need to go into the mountains to create a sacred site for Tempest. Not pushing anything, we play our hand minus Elemental Boon, giving us the maximum tier of Violent Windstorms. I tend to activate Power Storm and the Gift first to help me keep track of what's available, but it's not strictly necessary. It doesn't always matter, but it's worth considering the order of your powers. Here, we can start with Violent Windstorms, pushing the Explorers out 
and damaging the cities. Next, make sure to push the sand town out with scatter before clearing the mountains with a double dose of Tempest. We've earned a couple fear cards that could help if the island got slightly out of hand but nothing is going to stop the last invaders from being destroyed. Some final thoughts on Sunbright Whirlwind. Sometimes it's the little things. Look for opportunities to pick off a lone explorer, especially early on. Leaves you less to worry about later. Don't be afraid to sacrifice a presence to achieve the situations you want. Being able to push an explorer or Dahan into position will often be worth the price. It's okay to let a city build next to land too, if it means you're better able to isolate the island. Once you reach the most violent windstorms and have a solid major power, the extra city shouldn't be that hard to deal with. Alright everyone, that's all I've got this time. Hope you gained some insight, and good luck in your next games.